And welcome back to the show. We are uh, back. Uh, Sandra had to put her coat on because it's kind of cold in the studio. Here. And I tried to fix the she heat. Did. She was looking for pliers and she found some. I found I found a, 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 a placebo. No, I found some, an alternative. Actually that better was than effective. pliers. You yeah. found a, a wrench. Yeah, and fit. it actually worked perfectly. Better than a vice grip would have. Yeah. So you know what? But you're still wearing the coat. Because... It turns out that the heater doesn't work. <laughs> well, it's an old build. So all that work, but oh well, that's okay. Well, we're just happy to have Stephen Weir uh, joining us here on the show. And Stephen, uh, we've already had a great conversation before we came on the air. And, and uh, he's been talking to us and texting at the same time. And I won't do that again. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know he was, who he was texting. <laughs> Somebody out there got a, <clears throat> just got an email from me, and I have no idea who got it. <laughs> Well, who knows, maybe miracles will mm-hmm. just uh, bubble up from that uh, synchronicity. Maybe it'll be the publisher clearinghouse sweepstakes, and you'll get an email back saying, congratulations, I, you are the millionth email, you have just won a million dollars. I am the publisher's clearinghouse right Very here. Well, yeah, you brought these <laughs> books Oh, my God, today. that's so funny. <laughs> you brought the books today. You're, uh, I mean, uh, my little intro here says author, photographer, director. And uh, as we were chatting, you're involved with the Caravana Festival in Toronto, and you're, you're managing all these prizes and all this stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm uh, uh, an underwater photographer, and I'm a writer, journalist, and uh, right now I'm the editor of uh, Diver Magazine, which is a North American-wide magazine about diving. But to make ends meet, I do a lot of other stuff, and it's only really in a city like Toronto that someone like me could could make a living. So um, I do nothing but work with nonprofits, artists, authors, and I try to make sure that Canadians learn about uh, Canadians doing great things. But my first love's diving. <laughs> so as soon as the project's finished, I'm What's gone. the deepest you ever dived? Well, it's, yeah, it's, it, as a, you know, just swimming f- with a scuba tanks, about 130 or 40 feet. But in a submarine, much deeper. Did you ever get the bends? Uh, no, you usually don't recover. <laughs> really? You what? don't? But you, you, what it usually happens is that it hits you in the shoulder or in your legs or in your back. So you have trouble walking. or you From then on? Yeah, usually. Uh, you can you can get uh, treated in the hospital where they take you back down again and maybe maybe you'll be okay, but it's not something you ever want to get. No. What's the bends? What is that? It's uh, where uh, when you're down deep and you're down deep too long, nitrogen bubbles that are in your, in your oh. bloodstream come out of circulation, and then as you come up, the bubbles don't go back into your blood, so they just Ooh. wreck wherever they are, whether it be your spine or yeah, your... Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, so. That's why Jacques Cousteau, when he used to do the deep dives, they used to put a helium in the air mixture rather than nitrogen. Yep, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of people now, you know, that was... You think Jacques Cousteau was one of the first people to scuba dive it was back in the, the 40s, and now I mean, people are... Uh, are uh, mixing their own gases, using rebreathers, and instead of staying down for 15 minutes, they can stay down, stay down for hours. No, wait a sec. No, there was that movie, The Abyss, yeah, where they, um, at one point, the guy who was breathing a liquid oxygen thing, is that a real thing? Yeah, it, it can be. I mean, it's a, it's a little way off where they actually sort of give you gills and then they fill your 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 lungs. I mean, the, the, your lungs take the the oxygen from air and put it in your body so if you just simply put liquid in the lungs that has oxygen already inside then technically you should be able to your lungs can be adjusted so that you can breathe air that way sure hmm. still a while 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 away oh it's not not here yet same well, with Avatar, you know, that's great, but it's not here yet. So. Well, at least it was in 3D. Yeah. That's coming out. It's going to be all underwater, too. What? What is? Uh, the next Avatar movie. It's going to be underwater Avatar? The magazine that I work with, Diver Magazine, uh, in the past has worked with James Cameron, and the magazine actually builds submarines. So if you saw the Titanic and you saw these little submarines going through the wreck of the Titanic, that's sort of the subplot of the movie, um, those were made by Diver Magazine in Vancouver. So, oh, uh, I heard that 
they were making uh, subs in Vancouver that were some of the best subs in the world. Yeah. Like, not military subs, but... Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's, that's where they're made. And if you ever go to the Cayman Islands or Bonaire and uh, you go on one of those tourist uh, submarines, they're made in Vancouver. Hmm. So. Hmm. I always wanted to build a submarine. I always thought, you know, you, you, you know, when you got a cottage in the country and you got a great one of those great big propane tanks outside that are sort of submarine shaped, mm -hmm. I always thought you should take one of those and make a submarine out of it somehow. You could. And, and there, Joe, um, oh, and I'm going to forget his name, but um, uh, Dr. Joe McGinnis, who lives in here in Toronto, uh, took a lot of sort of propane tanks and cut them all up and put them underwater in Tobermory and turned it into an underwater habitat. And uh, not really a submarine, but he lived under there. And it was uh, so revolutionary back then, this was probably 40 years ago, that James Cameron, who, mm -hmm. who did the Titanic, who we just talked about, saw this underwater habitat uh, being taken up to Tobermory that he decided to learn how to scuba dive. And so James yep. Cameron learned how to scuba dive in Niagara Falls. And that's probably the most unforgiving place to learn how to dive. You mean in the Niagara River? Yeah, he up was on the, above the waterfalls, yeah. He and his brother learned how to dive there. Why would they do pick that place? They lived there. Yeah, okay. that's where he's from. Okay. I can tell okay. you there's a lot of stuff in, those, uh, in that river. It doesn't stay long. So there must it be a does it? <laughs> well, that's I mean, uh, I've thrown some stuff into the river there that uh, is worth a lot of money. Like? I'm not, I can't talk about it. But anyways, I'm just saying there's some treasure down there. <laughs> um, okay, let's get uh, busy. Because really what you said, you know, I was trying to pinpoint, and you said, well, I do everything, and you also, but you, it's really all about culture, right? That's right, and, and sort of non-profit. Yeah. Uh, because... I have to do a lot of pitches to the media, and I, it's easy to represent somebody that you can believe in. You know, it's, it's harder, I think, if you wanted to sell soap to somebody and you don't believe in it. Whereas with an author or a musician or a movie maker or, or you know, if the cause is right, you can be passionate and you can you can feel good about what you're doing. I'd, I'd hate to, you know, spend all my life trying to push soap. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I do cultural. I, I, I help out. I've helped out with the Association Defense of the Wrongly Convicted. Anything that helps make Canada a, a better place and help people uh, really tell their story. And it, it's, it's such a weird world that, uh, you know, the average communicator get so much email and so many calls that it's very hard for um, talented people to be discovered unless they, they have that certain je ne sais quoi. So that's what I do. And I look after mostly big events. Today was uh, Afrofest because they have, uh, they're getting screwed by the city, so they needed help. Mm -hmm. But um, so what? What are you doing? You're getting screwed by the city. How and what? Well, are you doing the to city help? last year they have they have a, a two day festival called Afrofest music. It's in, it's in Woodbine, and uh, they probably stayed on stage too long and too loud last year. So this year, uh, the city sort of said you can only have it for one day. And with festivals, if you go two days, there's, there's some savings by having the staging up for two days rather than one day. So they realized yesterday that if they're cut back to one day, they cannot make a go of it. So it's just a matter of mobilizing people to um, uh, you know, stand up and say, geez, you're picking on a, a, a group that shouldn't be picked on. So the mayor has stepped in, and maybe by the time people see this, It'll all be settled. So, so you're bringing, writing an article about it. Is that what you're a doing? A little to help? bit. It's it's all that. You know, it's articles. It's making phone calls. It's okay. posting. It's yeah, who knows. Well, that's really cool. That's really lobbying nice of you. It's some it lobbying. It's everything, and yeah, it's yeah. just a matter of finding people that look at this and go, you know, that's really wrong. <laughs> so it's at Woodbine Park. Yeah, because it used to be up at uh, Queens Park, right? Uh, no, that was uh, Irie Festival, and that was moved because trees were broken. And uh, mm. so they moved that uh, to City Hall in mm. Toronto and City Hall in Mississauga, and that's, I think, July 31st. 
What's I'm a called? walking um, like coming a event. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you want to talk about that? You're involved in a number of prizes, yeah, well, there's book a, prizes? The, the book prizes are fun. I just finished the um, helping out with the Taylor Prize, and it's actually the, the full title is the RBC uh, Taylor Prize, and it it awards Canadians for excellence in um, nonfiction writing. And here in Canada, I think because of the prize, we have a lot of our authors that um, mm. do what's called literary nonfiction. So they write good books that are true, but they write it in, in a style that is more like non, uh, more like fiction. So when you're reading the book, you're really enjoying it, and there's suspense. And hey, it's true too. So uh, that just finished, and it was finished last Monday, and it was uh, won by uh, Rosemary Sullivan for a book called Stalin's Daughter, and it was a very detailed biography about Joseph Stalin's daughter and just the, the angst and, and remorse that the, the poor woman went through most of her life. So uh, that, uh, that, uh, that won, won $25,000, and... Um, I didn't bring it because I gave away every copy. The, the, the book that came from that prize that I did bring was Camila Gibb, and she was one of our finalists. And this is a, 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 a book that the title goes, this is happy, and boy, it's not. But uh, as the story unfolds, uh, she does find happy. Uh, it's one of those very ironic titles, but um, uh, that's good. So the other books that we it's see not, here... It's not Fifty Shades of Grey or anything like that, right? You know, Fifty Shades of Grey is fiction, and I no, lip, no fiction crosses these lips. Although um, I'm not so sure, because if you, the Jean Gomeshi thing, I don't know how fiction is... Well, I mean, you know, fiction usually based has Based on some, truth, isn't yeah. it? So these books that you see here are more nonfiction, and they are from a prize that I also help out with called the Kundal Book Prize, and it's a $100,000 um, prize, and it's for the best history nonfiction book written in the world. And this year, Susan Pedersen, who is a Canadian but uh, uh, teaches in the uh, U.S., won for a book about the League of Nations. So, Now, what's this book about? The Bathurst Tragedy. Is that Bathurst, uh, no, uh, New Brunswick? Uh, no, close, close to all our hearts. The Subway. Oh, and it was just and crashed. well, it burned. There was a fire, and it was just how the city all of a sudden realized that hey, <laughs> our subways used to be state of the art, and now they're not. And that's a really good example of how a writer gets virtually no money for writing a book, mm -hmm. and yet is able to to make change. Mm -hmm. So that that's it's it's a it's, it's a good book. Um, mm. Books are changing, though, and this this year, um, finding that probably half of the people that I deal with don't want a book; they just want an e-book. And uh, uh, as a result, in Canada, the the number of publishers is shrinking, mm -hmm. as more and more people say, "Wait a minute, I, I'd rather just have it on my iPad." And mm -hmm. and what do you miss? Well, you miss some of the pictures. Well, maybe not. But so books, the book industry is really changing. So for authors. If you can win a prize, you can actually make some money. But for many authors, they might work for four or five years and make three or four thousand dollars at most. In fact, uh, uh, right now I, I probably get fifteen free ebooks a day from all over the world, and it's very hard to sell a book, something like a book like this, when people are people are getting fifteen free books. Well, the nice thing about ebooks is you can't burn them. <laughs> you can, right? but you have to throw your... your <laughs> you have to shred them with your uh, file shredder. Well, it's an interesting thing. Is you, you think about, um, uh, through history, the, the, the respect that you, you're supposed to give certain books, especially the Bible, and you think of the Nazis and the book burning, and now all of a sudden that's just... You know, you could uh, inadvertently put your iPad on a, on a magnet and destroy 20,000 books and is that <laughs> what would happen if the Bible was one of them so I think we're uh, the whole way of the reverence we we, uh, we give books is disappearing I think if you came into a room and saw nothing but books you might go whoever lives here is older than 50 uh, because you know if you, if you live in a condo uh, do you have room for books 
Um, I think that most people have just a big ass flat panel display on a wall, and that's your movie theater, it's your library, it's everything else. It's your e-books, uh, yeah. I think the idea that, uh, I don't know if any of you, have, or any of your audience have uh, had a, a mother or a grandmother or grandfather uh, die, and it's up to you to uh, mm -hmm. deal with their estate. Nobody wants books. You can't give them away. I mean, I, people have little little giveaways on their lawns because no, there's no bookstores to sell them anymore and Salvation Army won't take them and it becomes a millstone. And same with furniture, who wants, who wants brown furniture? So it's uh, what used to be very cool is uh, not. Yeah, what does that mean for our culture as a whole? It's a lot, it means if, like an e-book. If you're an author in the, uh, let's say, oh, I don't know, Oprah. You're in Chicago, and you come out with a weight loss book, and you hire somebody like me to promote it in the U.S., and then you could just say, well, for another $2,000, we'll promote it through Canada. And I think that for, for book authors, it's pretty hard to compete against the Oprahs and the Bill O'Reilly's and all the other sort of big stars that already come with an audience. It's going to be very, very hard for a, a new author to get a publisher and and to be to be read. Well, it's I think it's different than it used to be. Not just from the point of view that nobody wants books and and people are moving to eBooks, but I think it's different in the sense that almost everybody, well, that's an exaggeration, but almost everybody wants to write a book, and mo and there are more people today writing books than ever. And that's what eBooks allow for too, right? Well, they, they yes and yes self publishing. I, I, the, the, the difficulty with with uh, self publishing, and you know, I, I pr I've promoted a lot of ebooks uh, in the last few years, is that the self published ones, people, authors, have a hard time handling uh, the whole issue of uh, editing. And so, of those fifteen books that I get every day, and I just felt my my phone as I got another book probably just came through. Um, is that they don't read as well as a book that's had a professional team, a publishing team, tart it up yeah. for, for the... And, uh, and I think when you're not paying for a book and when you're getting books dropped on you all the time, and in the old days, if you gave me a hard-covered book, I would read it no matter what. Mm -hmm. With an e-book, if it doesn't mm -hmm. grab me, it's... It's gone. It's just a it's different experience. Well, it, it is too because when you have, there are what, five books here. Every single one is a different, slightly different size, different color, different, you know, font. You have a picture, you have a feel. Each thing has its own identity, right? When you're reading an ebook, it's all on your laptop. Well, yeah, but it's also showing your age, isn't it? Because um, if you. Um, I've just come out of school and you've got a condo or your apartment yeah. and you don't want books, you don't want those possessions. That's Is that age or convenience? It's age. Well, I it's guess the same age. thing, age is convenience, I guess. I mean, it's uh, the average age of an Amazon customer versus the average age of an Indigo buyer is a lost generation. And, really? Wow. Uh, I mean, people, I, I am a huge e-booker, but uh, a lot of that's because I'm on the subway. And, uh, you know, it, the subways used to be raucous places, right? I mean, people are just, you know, whatever. But now you get on the subway and everyone's just... <laughs> what do you mean raucous? I mean, Loud. what do you mean? Everything. 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 I mean, you meet poets, you meet drunks, you meet... But you now the, the new culture, I think, f in the subway is that people are reading and, and maybe communicating. But well, have you ever noticed even, you know, when I've gone out to dinner with my family... You know, there's like six or eight of us there, and we're all we're all sitting with each other. We're all doing this. Yeah, and it's also, I mean, it's neat that you can go into a restaurant by yourself and order a meal and read a book on on your iPad, and it's socially accessible. And I don't mean pushing an iPad, but some sort of device. So, to me, books are they'll they'll be gone. But yes, you'll still be st people will still be writing. The challenge is, is in getting people to read what to find out about you. And in many ways, well, the first book that I e-book that I ever promoted was uh, about Carla Homoka, and mm -hmm. wow. it was um, Paula Todd, and she she had written it, and 
um, normally uh, a publicist will be hired for a month, but she hired me by the hour. And uh, in the space of about five hours, she sold probably 20,000 copies of her book. Now, the book was uh, $5 a, a copy. Uh, a book like this is probably $30. So she gets far less money, but as a writer, her profit or her share of the book is still more than if you sold a book. Yeah. So in Canada, bestseller is 6,000 copies, and in five hours, she sold you know, four times what, what would be a bestseller. And how did she do that? Just, it was such a vile topic that oh. she didn't have to do it. I mean, People somebody like me had... Yeah, but it, it was, I, I mean, it, the topic was about how Carla Homoka did her time, learned French, and moved to Guadeloupe and tried to just meld into Caribbean French society. And... Um, uh, like going unnoticed. Did she and Paula you? just thought, eh, screw that, I'm going to find her. And like a real detective, and she, I don't mean like a real, she is a detective, a lawyer, she's a broadcaster, she found her and she wrote it, but she met her and talked to her, and she has three children now, Carl and Mocha. So that was, that's the type of book that you could sell as an e-book, and within, within a week, it, there was, it, no book has sold as much as that particular book has. And uh, to me, that's a sad statement. Honestly, the curiosity, that's what did it, right? It's the people are curious, but why they'd be curio curious. I don't want to argue in favor or yeah. not. But no, it's, you're right, but it's still, uh, it's like, it, ugh. Well, I don't know. I think that uh, I, the Kundal Book Prize, we had a book about Eichmann and how after the Second World War, he escaped to South America and he had all these uh, South African Nazis coming to his house and he was like the messiah. And I think it's really important that books like the Eichmann book revealed, you know, you think Second World War and you think all these tyrants and that we just strung them up after the war and they died. But some of them didn't. And uh, mm -hmm. governments uh, tolerated their, their existence. So I, I'm not sure I agree with you. I think the Carlo Mocha book was very useful. Again, like uh, that, the, the subject, the person that was written about made a deal with the Canadian government. And I don't think anybody within the government wants people to realize how she got off. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she yeah. did her time. She followed the letter of the law. But, but didn't she get a degree? I mean, she learned I, French, right? She learned French. I don't know if she got a degree or not. I, I, okay. Like you, I have some did. revulsion, but um, I read the book. But that's the sort of book that the new, the new culture, the new e-book culture, it just lends itself. Because mm. uh, with the, in Toronto, if you want to have a drink, even in the, like a bar in my neighborhood, like a rundown speakeasy, that drink is more than a world-class e-book. It's not something you save up for. Remember the old days with albums where you'd, oh my gosh, I got an album, and you would save up an e-book. Literature is just becoming free. And uh, one of the projects I'm, I'm working on today, I, I mean, after this morning, is um, uh, an art show uh, for the Singh twins. They're, they're, mm. uh, they're British identical twins who are, are of Punjabi descent, but they've been born and raised in Liverpool, so they sound like the Beatles. <laughs> and they are being brought to Canada by the Sikh community or the Sikh community to commemorate or to kick off um, uh, um, Sikh month in Ontario. And we had a federal election uh, this year, and in the Liberal Party, or the the, the backbench, or and in and the and in cabinet, there are five Sikh uh, MPs. Up until the, the Liberals took over, there were no Sikhs in government, or at least in the federal government. So there's been a real shift now in terms of culturally. Who has control? Who has who? Uh, up until now, nobody really cared what 
Sikh art is or Sikh music, even though there's so many people in Canada that are Punjabi or, or Sikh. So these artists are huge. They're just, um, the, the rest of the world has not known them. Of, but, but just because of an election, mm. we're now going to see them. So, Interesting. So, Interesting. And it's like the books. All it takes is a change. And then, and so I guess what it is, it's very hard nowadays if you're uh, uh, a traditionalist, if you like your artwork big, and uh, landscapey, and I, I, I put in I put in 15 years working in the McMichael Gallery, so I mean I know landscape, and I know the group of seven, but I think that era is like leaving us. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, if you're in a condo, you're not you don't have wall space for some big yeah, thing. In fact, yeah. most of the people that I visit that have condos are art collections in the toilet. You know, you walk into their washroom, and there's nothing but art. And, and yet, in my generation, the idea of actually having a painting in a, in a wet room is just like, you know, oh my gosh. So the, the, the Sikh twins, uh, Sing twins, are, are doing miniature stuff that's Punjabi and also Liverpoolian. <laughs> and it, they're being feted by this new uh, group of Canadians that's really showing influence. You know, our defense minister is uh, Sikh. So... That's that's what my life is. The books, music. I like uh, like music. I also like causes. I, you know, I helped out and I continue to advise the Association of Defense of the Wrongly Convicted. And What's that it, all about? Those are people that have been thrown in jail and the key's been thrown away, and then you find out twenty years later that they're innocent, and uh, then they come out of jail and they are totally screwed up. So. Um, and how, how are they um, acquitted? DNA and stuff? Yeah, DNA is one of the biggest things. The problem yeah. is that a lot of people will, uh, most, these are mostly murders, a lot of people will confess to them simply because it's just easier. <laughs> you know, if you, mm. if you say, um, I did kill my son, but I'm going to, re- I regret it, you know, or, or show remorse. After your 25 years, you can then get out. But if you say for 25 years you're innocent, you, you, they don't show. They don't give you early release because there's no, there's no, there. You haven't had ret, you there's know. No you closure. So there are some lawyers in Toronto that do nothing but rescue people. But it takes forever. It takes forever. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I help out with that. And that's uh, that must be that very interesting. It is. But I'm making all this sound like it's just, you know, <laughs> you feel good at the end of the day and you mm. do to a point, but it has just as much stress yeah, and angst okay. and hurt mm. feelings and backstabbing and everything else as if I was working for a coffee company. Or any company. Yeah. Drama. I work out of my car. And uh, nowadays they can find me there too. Well, the cool thing is we can now work out of our car. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, there's a wireless laptop, yeah, there's cell phone. We're good to go, right? Yeah, there's one TV guy, and I can't remember his name, where he likes to drive stars around in his car and they just sing as they drive through Manhattan. So I'm, it's a really award winning TV show. But <laughs> Problem with problem with any of this stuff oh, I is. Oh, know that's the English guy, right? Yeah. Okay, so he had um, Stevie Wonder. He had Adele. Yeah. He's a comedian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny, and they come up with raps on the spot. It, he had Justin Bieber there too. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it, it's it's tough, and it's something like this particular. And I've been here before, and I've been on before, but um, the problem with all of the new technologies is that there isn't a model yet for paying you what you're worth. So if you're writing an ebook or if you're doing music or albums or anything like that, uh, it's really tough. You Did you to find photography too? Because you're a photographer. Oh, photography is gone. Uh, <laughs> it's just... So that's even worse then. Well, if you specialize... I specialize in underwater photography. And so that's a niche, right? You, somebody... So that um, keeps you alive. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there's... Somebody's always willing to pay for a picture of a shipwreck, but it, let's say you, I don't know, for for uh, for the show, you you want to have a, you want to have a a picture of a, a man making a a pot on a pottery wheel. Okay. 
you can get that in 30 seconds. Yeah. And by the time I finish this monologue, you'll have gotten a thousand of them. And you can get them on... Called uh, Google Images. <laughs> yeah, Google Images, Flickr, you name it, for free. Absolutely for free. No royalties or anything like that? Sometimes there is. Who knows? But Still mostly people expensive. steal them. But things like, things like underwater photography, that's a tough one. And so if you have that niche, uh, certainly somebody like, um, I think in Canada, uh, Ed Bertinsky mm. or um, uh, Yuri Doak, uh, you're more of an artist than a photographer, so you can make money. But no, photography is like the first thing that went out the door. Uh, mm. I think the next was record industry, music. Music, yeah. Well, you know, it's weird because, uh, I mean, um, and even the ebooks, right? It's like everybody knows when you're getting an MP3 or you're getting an ebook that the, co- the marginal cost of that next unit is zero, basically, right? And that's part of, because we're talking about, you know, how do you get paid for art these yeah. days, right? Yeah, and I, I, in an example of, it's not all bad. Um, about two weeks ago, my wife and I had went to dim sum with uh, a teacher from Ghana, and she wanted books because of the prizing. I can get good books to give to. Well, we give them to the Canadian Navy. We, we, you know, give them to the prisons. But you know, books that uh, people want. <coughs> but the cost for me to send 150 books to Ghana to a school was um, so prohibitively expensive. It was in the thousands of dollars wow. <coughs> in shipping costs. However, if you get um, you know, a hard drive like this, and I can fill this with 20,000 books and permission from the publishers. and the, So a school in Ghana can get every book that matters. Uh, and then their response to me was, well, we don't have any electricity in the school. So we got them, uh, I didn't, but an ad agency here in Toronto got them a generator. And then another ad agency in Toronto gave them six Apple computers. They were a year old and the agency got rid of them because they were a year old, but uh, they're still great. And the cost of providing this school with the used computers and a generator and the e-books was still only about a third of the cost of me FedExing 150 bucks. So Plus, they can use those things even after those things, because well, you can use the generator forever. It's not just to do with this shipment, so the cost can also be. You're ruining my dream. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're ruining my. No, you're oh, right. You're I'm right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what Wait are you a minute. Do with all these books, though, oh, Stephen. Oh. What are we going to do? I think that anybody who wants a book. Oops. And they're all good Canadian books. Should uh, drop you an email, uh, and if they want any, I I probably I be happy to send more. There's not a single book that isn't good, and they're, uh, you know, they're all nonfiction. They're all award-winning books. Well, thanks sorry for, for ruining your today. dream. <laughs> you ruined my dream. They're going to take my generator and do other stuff. But um, oh, well, that's cool. Continue. What's They're that? taking a generator. What do you mean? Well, we, I got them a generator to to fire up the computers yes. so that the computers can read yes. the good Canadian books they now have. Yes. But you're saying, no, they're just going to take the generator. No, no, no. I'm saying they can use it for other things. Maybe. It can be. It, it, no, it's not just for them. I'm saying it can be extended and used for other things, and you can even send them more books. I could do that. <laughs> I'm saying you can extend the cost out because that generator can be used for many more. We could be... Whatever it's boom. and so can the laptops. It just it's it's great that and the, the cost of the dim sum is probably <laughs> more than the cost of the hard drive. So it's it's good. Well, these can always be used as fuel. I'm trying to be positive. Well, they can, right. they can, and you know, as we talked about earlier, in some ways, the idea of burning books is so abhorrent, and you think of the Nazis, but now. Maybe that's what you do with old books, because um, you know you can have that twenty thousand books on. Well, we can recycle this. these, can't we? Yeah. Well, we're, we're gonna that's about the same as burning them. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know I don't. I just did I, another I like bad books. thing. I'm one of those guys that still likes to have actual books. So these are okay. Going so on you're the over fifty. Or maybe we're going to give these away to 
And if you give them away, I'll replace them with good books. I, okay. More, just, good books. Awesome. More good books. More good books. Let's create prize packs for our guests. That's awesome. Prize packs. Yeah, and it's... Uh, That's great. As I said, with, with many book, gigs too. book authors, um, it's a tough hole. So if anybody wants a really good Canadian book, just watch the show and we'll, uh, we'll bring... Bring them by. So, okay. so in, just in terms of anybody who wants to be an author out there, are you recommending do the ebook thing or don't? What do you don't be an author? <laughs> no, I mean you 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 made the point that everybody wants to be an author. Everybody has a story to tell. Yes. And um, just because it's free or low cost to produce your own book, that doesn't mean that our tastes as readers has changed. If it's crap, it's, it's crap. crap. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. So you, the, so if you are thinking about turning out a book, the rules are the same in that you have to write something compelling. You have to write something that people want to read. If it's you want to just have your own story, well, just do that. But don't, don't bother giving it to people. Because people won't read crap. You can save it as a PDF and email it out to your friends. You could do that, but it, if you're a painter and you might never ever sell a painting, it's still, if you want people to know about you, you know, it's, if it's good, that's, that's that. There's, if you're just writing for catharsis or whatever, that's one thing. But if you're writing to be read, mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. and, and, and get a team. I, I, you know, it's you get a if you're a writer, get a really good illustrator. Uh, don't steal it. Get a good illustrator. Uh, get somebody like me to promote it. And I'm. Oh, by the way, this is not an ad because I don't want any more work. <laughs> so, but but if you want, you should get a promoter, and you should think. Um, if, last week, uh, an American uh, sent a hundred people to do what I do and said, hey, I'm going to give you my book. All I ask that is on March 23rd, you do a review. And um, then he sent me the book, because I thought, oh, that's a novel idea to promote a book. To have Excuse a, the pun. Yeah, nonfiction, but yes. <laughs> so uh, 100 people are going to write a review, and we all get this book free, although we probably could have gotten it free anyways. And then... That would probably mean for Amazon, all of a sudden there'd be this blip going, "Hey, a hundred people are are writing about with this book that we've never heard about." So, um, so I did it, and so the the man sent me his book, and then he made a mistake, <gasps> and he sent three others of his books. So it's uh, so that's one. I, I met another author that for a hundred bucks will write you into the book, so that the villain could be. Stephen Weir, or and then I've met other authors that will have launches because for a traditional book like this, if you have a party, you go, you know, you go to the yeah, book you launch. go to the El Macombo and you uh, give away some beer, and you can probably sell two hundred books to your friends, and um, you can go. Um, I just I just finished doing a launch with uh, Richie York for the Bed In for uh, the John and Yoko story, and you can sell two hundred. And you get some famous people to come by, and you can sell 300 copies. Well, with an ebook, how do you do that? You go to a bar, and there's mm. nothing there. So I went to one where this guy would um, uh, stand with you after you've ordered the book. We'd have our picture taken, and then when my ebook arrived, the cover would be me with the author. And um, oh. whoa! So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. It is, and it, you know, some some authors take it for granted. The um, uh, lead guitarist for Led Zeppelin, Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page wrote a book. Came to Toronto, and he's just too lazy to sign. <gasps> so he had his signature on a stamp, and he just sat at Indigo, was going, next, next, next. Well, not many oh people can get away with that. So, God, that's just. Well, maybe he had a bad wrist. Yeah, I don't maybe. know. I don't. I think Robert Plant talks only in a whisper to keep. So if you ever meet him, you have to listen to the whisper. I had to take his picture, and I thought, hey, this this guy's gonna be just loud. But it's just a little. I'm Robert Plant. <laughs> <laughs> Although I knew it, I knew it. Yeah. But uh, 
Uh, but Jimmy Page, I think, to protect his wrist. Actually, that's probably what it was. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe he didn't know how to write it. Well, that's, that's a good idea. That's what I'm idea. wondering. That's what I'm wondering, if he didn't know how yeah. to. Beats putting a big X down, right? Well, <laughs> he's a musician, John Doe. I don't know. He probably just goes X. I don't know. I mean, so I guess that takes us back to the very start when I sat down here. It's like it's a just changing world, and we all want to do things that don't hurt people. Yeah. Interesting. Well, interesting, Stephen. It's been great to have yeah. this conversation. Nice. Love to have you back and really talk I, 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 where I wanted to go, but it's almost like a whole big topic is like, what does that mean for a culture? Because it seems to me now there's so much culture. It used to be that, uh, you know, the, the people producing culture were a very small minority of the population. Now everybody is contributing. There's so much content. The relationship between content producers and consumers seems yeah, to be it, inverted. It is a topic for another day. It's, it's something that, for me, as, I, uh, as you can tell, I'm getting old, or I am old. No. No. And so, as you get older, you drop out. You know, the tech, as the technology mm-hmm. comes along, you make, a co- you make a decision that, I'm not going to do Facebook. I'm not going to do Snapchat or anything. I, I cannot do that. I have to stay as current as possible, or I'll never make any money. And so um, I try to stay you know, current, but I think that in terms of culture, you think maybe if you're a guitarist or you're a writer and you're in your 50s, you're, you're probably thinking, well, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'll, I'll ride it out. I'll always have a boomer audience with me. But the changes are so dramatic in, uh, in Italy and mm. Germany and uh, a lot of the European countries, they are actually paying their authors bonuses to publish their books in their own language because what they're finding in Germany and Italy and Czechoslovakia, you name it, is that authors are going, why would I write a book in Italy, in Italian? Why would I write a book in Czech, Serbian? whatever, everybody's writing in English. And so it's this, because Amazon sells more books than, you know, I don't know. The, uh, so, yeah, it is, it is really, really changing. English, English is becoming the universal culture uh, for many, many people. And then the end result is the dominant player in that culture is not Canadians. It's not Australians. I it's mean, the, now it's the Koreans. It's not the Koreans. It's, it's the, the Americans. Still, and I, the Americans they are. Nice. It's yeah. in literature. You're you're buying. Like, can you name one good book that was written by an Australian? I I can't either. So don't look at me. There's that one woman. That There's one. that. You know, forget her name. But the whole country of Australia, you can't name one, and you can't name one. The Thornbirds. I'm gonna say. I don't know. <laughs> that was a guess. That was a guess. You could look it be. up on your Wikipedia. You are going to get these emails from New Zealanders who say, "Look at buddy," but uh, there is there's that is that is a discussion. But by the time I come back, it'll have changed again. All right. Well, next time you come back, we'll talk about what's changed. So, yeah, Stephen, we are great to have you on the yeah, show today. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, come that back was anytime. Interesting. Very enlightening. Let's uh, we'll give out some books. Yeah, and no, I. Um, with one of the book prizes, the Kendall Prize, I go next door and I ride the mega bus to Montreal. Yeah. And you guys are never open, but then yeah, we are. Instead of me lining up we for close, cheesecake, I'll, I'll drop off some books. Okay, awesome. Great. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Sounds good. Okay, we've Sounds got more. Good. More is coming up right here on that channel. More interesting conversations. <laughs>